My school, with the lack of funding, uh, more and more teachers are paying for materials out of their pockets. There are no textbooks, uh, there are no uh, supplemental materials to do, so all of those responsibilities of getting that material for the different kids. Uh, students come from teachers' pockets or if they can find someone to share materials. If it weren't for me going out um, and buying books, we wouldn't have books in my classroom, I teach second graders and they love to read and they love books and I have spent thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours making sure that there are enough books for them to read and be interested in. You just yeah. go and say this is a need in my classroom and I need to, to get it and I'm also like an architect too because I'm building things. My mm -hmm. students all have an orthopedic need of some sort and they all every year look different. It's not like something that worked last year is going to work again and so you're starting from square one and you're going and I'm like I need to go to Lowe's and invent something that's going to work for my classroom <laughs> but it, yeah it all comes out of your pocket and you don't even think twice about it. Yeah. We're lucky because we are um, a district that hasn't felt the impact as much as maybe some others, but we still see a lot of kids coming to school without eating breakfast or having the necessary school supplies, and so our teachers do fill that need. They have snacks in their classrooms or they give school supplies to kids that are in need of that. I mean, you have kindergartners that are saying, oh, are those bananas left over? Can I take them home? I mean, that's when yes. you know that they need yes. something to eat when they go home. To get six year olds not going to ask for that if they don't. So we started a Feed a Friend program where all the teachers donate, and then once a month we can give to 20 families. We can give them groceries, and we have staff members also drive them to their home so that it's not an issue of I'm carrying groceries home on the bus. It's like you see that it's a need, and then the teachers are then again filling another need outside of their classroom. But I mean, you have, you have to do it. They're your students. I just feel like if OEA goes away, there goes our, our voice, essentially. I mean, we can still try to fight, but I don't know how strong it would be to say my students deserve to, to, to walk into a building where the roof isn't caving in or where the toilets are not flooding over. My students deserve to have quality lunches, just like the class or the, the school down the street. Why is there such disparity between the two buildings? Why is the funding not fair, not equal, but fair? so that all children succeed. I feel like our voice would truly be gone and that's why we've gotta make sure the OBA doesn't go away. <laughs>